Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I know it's been a while, I've been busy, but this is the next newest episode of Teardown Tube and as you can see I have a FC Twin made by Yobo I believe. Um, it's similar in function to um, the retro duo that I've done teardowns of in the past. Just uh, plays NES games, SNES games, you switch between them and it takes SNES controllers now on the back, you'll notice just standard composite output, AV out, and the DC plug has a small annoying thing about it. Um, normally the the uh, sleeve is ground and the tip would be the positive, but uh, the adapter for this is actually switched, so it's negative in the center and then the outer ring has to be positive, which is annoying, so you can't just use this with normal AC adapters unless if you either modify this or modify the cord. To swap the wires but anyway uh, let's get in there uh, it's a little deeper than uh, my bit size so I had to use this stupid extender because I don't feel like finding where my other uh, my other screwdriver set is and yeah, my autofocus is uh, really wanky now for some reason there we go oh, oh yeah one of the screws uh, I've already opened this one of the screws uh, kind of broke there, oopsie. There we go. Yeah, you can see the shiny label Yobo manufacturer. Really hard to read, but it just says uh, NTSC 10 volts at 600 milliamps. Uh, let's see, use AC, the uh, included AC adapter only, and it says center is negative, outer is positive. Made in China, no surprise there. Uh, come on. Yeah, I might need to open uh, some blinds here, maybe to get some more light in. So I'm going to run and do that because it's kind of cloudy today, so I'll be back. There, that's so much better. Now let's not lose all the screws. I probably lost some, didn't I? What? Ah, screw it all. I know I've made that joke many times before. Where did that last screw go? Oh well. Who cares? Anyway. Yeah, so this guy just lifts off. The only thing is there are uh, three wires connecting. Actually, there are four. That's interesting. Uh, connecting the LEDs uh, to the main board here. And as you'll notice if you've watched my teardown of the uh, the uh, Retro Duo, the SNES board, which is down here, looks pretty much identical. You have your three uh, custom mass ground chips um, and various, there's a Mosel brand in there, Toshiba, uh, various um, RAM chips and whatnot for the uh, processors themselves, and a very oddly mounted crystal. It's like... It's it's not even close to the board. It's raised up and it's like twisted. That's that's kind of odd there. But uh, yeah, so it's got that going for it. So anyway, next up, uh, the NES board. Uh, some of the contacts are actually kind of pushed up, which is a little odd and unsettling. So uh, QC is uh, uh, getting a little sloppy there. But um, you'll notice the same similar... Uh, Lop top chip for the NES, uh, the crystal oscillator decoupling caps, uh, more decoupling caps for supply rail decoupling, and that's pretty much it. And these two boards are connected by a uh, ribbon connector with lots and lots of pins because it passes all the data through basically for the controllers and everything so you can run either game. Uh, big honkin' power switch just like the Retro Duo, reset switch just like the Retro Duo. And uh, interestingly enough, it looks like there's a uh, diode protection on, on the inputs, um, which is nice. <laughs> uh, one thing that I am starting to notice, and I've read a little bit about this on um, some modding forums, um, the video amp is nowhere to be found on here, which means this will output direct to RGB through to the main board here and then through to the back to the uh, power board. Basically, the power board is in the back here, and you'll see that little chip right in there. That's the uh, RGB to composite converter. 
So if I do mod this guy, either I'm taking RGB signals directly off or I'm going to have to rig a chip like this chip or something similar to convert the signals to uh, composite for me. But that's not that big of a deal seeing how small this board is. If you guys saw my um, my progress videos on my portable um, uh, SNES that I'm building, I had to cut my board down drastically to even get it to remotely this size. This, si this board is already cut down, and so it would have actually been easier probably just to use this and then wire up my own uh, video converter and amp chip. But anyway, basically you'll see... Uh, I could take this out, but there's really no use. There's nothing on the other side. I've already checked. Big honking heat sink and um, two regulars, a 7809 and a 7805. Um, the 7805 is a 5-volt regulator, and the 7809 is a 9-volt regulator. They're both positive regulators. And so this guy can actually take, um, uh, you know, the AC adapter can take, you know, from like anywhere from, like, you know, 9 to 12 volts or so, and it'll work happily off of that. Um, but it has to have the right polarity. But um, like the Retro Duo that I took apart, it, it could only accept 5 volts because there was no pre-regulation internal. So if you fed it more than that, you would fry your Retro Duo. So I would have wished that they'd put some sort of regulator in between or something, give you greater flexibility, but they didn't, so whatevs. And uh, let's see. Beyond that, I just see a lot of caps and... Um, some 945 um, transistors. These are probably, yep, um, they're right before the um, the audio and video output. They're just um, using those as probably just like simple um, amplifiers, like common emitter amps or something like that. So nothing really all that bad there. Uh, looks like, oh, a Sony chip for the uh, video converter. Let's see if I can read that. CXA... Uh, 1645 it looks like almost so it's using a Sony chip which is um, interesting I would expect them to like I don't know cheap out or something like that that's actually I think that's a decent chip <laughs> um, but other than that the build quality is really shoddy I don't know if because I bought this used so there's like all this crap there but I mean you can also notice like a lot of flux and like the solder joints are really dull and gray so it's not the greatest soldering the hand solder parts but um yeah other than that this is pretty much all that's in one of these nowadays I can't wait though till um you know how this guy is an NOAC so it's it's emulating the original hardware it's not any of the original chips or anything I can't wait for when they do that for the SNES because then you can take all these discrete chips and just have like a single or two of those uh, these black blobs and you could just emulate all the hardware that way which would be awesome or another option is in the future if they can reverse engineer all the hardware and if it'd be cheap enough just stick it in an FPGA and call it a day but um I guess I've rambled on for long enough this was only meant to be a quick video because I still got homework to do but anyway I just wanted to uh, not do any work <laughs> and waste some time so I thought I'd make a video of, of this guy which I got in a little while ago but I haven't had much time to play with but um all in all this should be pretty cool to make into some sort of portable or what I've been meaning to do a Super Nintendo toaster and it would have two slots uh, one for each game and each bread slice slot would accept a different game uh, either SNES or NES games and so I thought that'd be cool and so, uh, now I guess I just need to find a toaster for that. But um, all my projects have more or less been put on hold since uh, i pretty much been having to put all my time into my classes and all that jazz. And then on top of it, my senior project, which I want to show you guys after I get some of it actually built. I'm just doing a lot of research right now, pretty much. But it will be awesome. And I know I keep saying that and, you know, dragging you guys along, not telling you exactly what it is, but um, it'll be worth it. <laughs> so anyway, I guess that's pretty much it today. That was a quick video, just 10 minutes. Um, I don't feel like taking these boards out because there's really nothing underneath. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's just what's inside the uh, Yobo FC Twin uh, competitor to the 
Retro Duo. Honestly, at least on the newer model Retro Duo that I have, I have two of them, I like the build quality better on the Retro Duo, even though the board is larger, but it has a built-in composite converter on the board, which makes wiring simpler and whatnot, but it makes it larger at the same time. But the Yobo, it's nice that it has an onboard regulator, but I really don't like when manufacturers switch the pins on the DC input because that is so annoying. So I'm going to have to go in there and swap them, and uh, I'd just rather not have to deal with that. But anyway, I've rambled on for long enough, so I guess I'll see you guys next time when I have something more substantial to tear down. So until then, I'll see you guys.